Patrick Collins, Louis Labraki, and Tony O'Malley were definitely the three kingpins of post-war Irish painting. However, unlike Labraki and O'Malley, Collins's output was very small. His paintings don't come up for sale very often, especially important pieces like Moorland Water. This piece is pure Collins, with its muted colors and soft gray light, a light that's impregnated with moisture. He never went after a picturesque view. Collins pared down and distilled his experience of the land in a constant search to identify something less specific and much more elemental. In this painting, he pushed abstraction further than he had ever done before. Sky, clouds, mountains, water, rocks, they all merge within a protective womb-like shape that's full of energy, whipped up by a brisk wind. Looking at the painting with its robust paintwork, we can sense the freedom Collins felt as a young boy who explored the rivers, lakes, the rocky fields and woods around his native Sligo. In Moorland Water, like in many of his paintings, Collins hasn't extended the motif right to the edges of the canvas. Instead, he floats it within a painted frame. This border acts as a kind of parenthesis, having the effect of separating the subject from the present. The artist draws on his memories where details are isolated, condensed, merged and blurred, but where the essence of his recollection is communicated. Collins must have been influenced by abstract expressionism, but he resisted becoming absorbed into any international style. He wanted to find a way of painting that was distinctly Irish. Collins's rural subject matter and his identification with the land, his overt romanticism, his obsession with the past, and his predilection for poetic abstraction. All these formed a solid basis for a unique genre that dominated Irish art of that generation.